this video, I'd like to look at an Android application, which is a simple restaurant tip calculator. It can be found at the URL seen here. So here is in the AVD, the Android virtual device, this restaurant calculator. So we have a text view, a label, and then an edit text for the user to enter the bill. There's a hint there. Um, so we can just start typing the amount. 78, uh, 67 was the amount. And then down here in the text percentage, we can give a percentage for the tip, 20%, and then calculate, it'll calculate the amount for the tip as well as the, the total. Okay, so in the uh, layout design here, the activity underscore main XML of the layout, it is a constraint layout. We have a text view, that's this bill amount label. So there it says text the bill amount. It is, I gave it an ID, even though I'm not gonna code it in any way. Um, there are the constraints for it. Then as next comes this edit text. It is, um, as I say, an edit text so the user can type in it. It was given an ID of ET bill amount. It was given a hint of uh, 25 so that it, uh, that's not there as the text, that's there as the hint. So the user doesn't have to delete what's, delete that 25. They can get a hint of what they should be typing there. That should probably not have the dollar sign because we don't want them typing the dollar sign. Um, we don't want them typing the dollar sign because the input type of, of this edit text is uh, a number decimal. So that's going to allow the user to type characters and correspond to decimal numbers. So they'll be allowed to type uh, numbers and a dot, um, but they won't be able to type letters. Okay, so if I come over here and clear this out, I'm typing the word cat on my computer, which should go into the Android virtual device, and it doesn't because it's a number decimal only. And then I have various constraints. So this is next to that uh, TV bill, and then uh, the top is to the to the parent to the, the constraint layout. And the next row down, we have the the tip percentage uh, text view, and then under that an edit text, and we're making that a number. So we gave the hint of twenty. Oops, pardon me. We're giving the hint of 20 to tell them that we expect them to enter 20 for 20%, not 0 0.20. And also we've made the input type number, which is typically sort of an integer and not, and not so they shouldn't be able to type a, a point in there. Let's see, I'm typing a, a point to type 0 0.20 and it's not working. So that's what these input types do for you. Then underneath that, we have this button, which you see here, and it is uh, constrained on both sides. That's why it ended up centered. Um, and then there are two text views for the result. Uh, one says tip amount and then some uh, dashes and same thing down here, total amount and some dashes. Uh, they're given IDs, they're constrained on both sides. Uh, they have to be constrained. They're constrained vertically once and horizontally twice. And that's how they ended up centered, that sort of twice horizontal, sort of both sides of the parent. Okay, so let's move over to the Kotlin code and look at that. So we have our various imports here. Let me make a little more room. The we have some declared space for some variables, uh, a bill, a tip, a total are all doubles. Then I'm connecting to the to the, the layout to code. And so I had 
something with an ID of ET bill amount. And then over here in code, I called it ET bill amount. So that's just my convention that I usually use. And ET stands for edit text. And then I usually give the code name and the uh, ID, this, use the same string for that. Just to remind myself that they're related. So ET will remind me it's an edit text. Bill amount will tell me its role in this program. And then I'm using that same uh, name for the ID over in the design of the layout and over here in the, the code. Val, because once I make this connection, I'm not going to change it. So that's for the bill amount. That's for the, the edit text as a tip percentage. Um, TV is the answers I'm going to display. That also has to be coded. Um, so this is for displaying the tip amount, for displaying the total amount the text views. So these two are edit text, these two are text views. And then the last one is a button, which I am not going to edit, but I want to establish a click listener. And so that's what I'm doing next. So establishing, letting the system know that I might, uh, the user is going to click on that button and then I want to react accordingly. I'm putting this in a try. I can have a problem here that, the I'm going to take what's in the edit text, the text in there, which is a little bit more than a string, cast it to a string and then cast that to a double. So, and that could cause a problem that that could not work if they, right now this is blank, remember the 25 in here is just the hint. So if I go and try to calculate that, I'm getting down here a toast that says enter the number. So if I enter the number, a number here, $45 was my bill amount. But now my percentage was I left blank. Then again, I get the tip. So either one of those, and I'll do 25%. And now it works. Okay. So I have two situations here where I'm taking what's written in the edit text for the bill amount, casting it as a taking the text, casting it as a string, casting it as a double. That could fail taking the tip amount, same thing, taking the text, casting as a string, casting as a double, dividing by 100 to turn it into a percentage, and then doing my calculations. So either of those might fail and throw me down into the catch, which is a toast where I'm using this. Remember with a toast, sometimes this is a problem and you might change it for application context or base context. Um, so here's the calculation of the total, and then I'm displaying the tip amount, which is the what I call tip here, which is really percentage times the bill amount. So that's the amount of the tip. And then here I've done the total calculation up here, which was bill times one plus tip. So that is displaying uh, the results that when they've clicked the button, if nothing went wrong, if something goes wrong, you'll end up in the catch. I have a text change event. So when, if I'm changing the tip percentage here, so if I've changed it from 25 to something, it, as I change that text, it clears out my two answers. So I've added a text change listener. So I'm going to have a handler for my text change event of the edit text called tip percentage. And I have to create uh, three methods, I have to override three methods, but only one of them do I put actual code in. I've decided to leave the other ones blank. I have to have them, but I've decided I don't want to do anything there. And bill amount, pretty much the same. Clear out if they've changed the bill amount. And I added just to show you that you can have other events. So I have a focus event on the tip percentage. So when I put the cursor up here, I've changed the focus. And then down here, I've added the focus. So I'm sort of changing, changing the focus. So on focus change. So whether I give something else the focus, it's changing, or if I give it the focus, it's changing. And there is an on focus change method then I have to uh, work with. It has two standard arguments. The view, the thing that sort of brings me here, the widget, in this case, the edit text percent tip percentage. 
and then a boolean of uh, is it getting the focus or is it losing the focus? Is it is it true has the focus or false does not have the focus anymore? So these I you know found this somewhere. This was I should have better variable names here. Um, but the first one is the view, the thing that got or lost the focus, and P1 is the, the Boolean, whether it has the focus or whether it no longer has the focus. So we're asking a question on the Boolean, does it have the focus? If it has the focus, then I'm going to the view, the thing I clicked on, the widget, the edit text in this case, and we're setting the background color to this um, the alpha, the red and the green are the same. So that's sort of a yellow. The blue is a little bit less. So that makes it a light yellow. And then it's got some transparency. So that's how I ended up with this light yellow. Otherwise, if I've lost the focus, I'm setting the background back to white. So when I lose the focus, this color goes back to white. So just another uh, event and the listener for that event. Okay, that's what I wanted to tell you.